welcome. Your presence here is no coincidence. It marks the beginning of a meaningful connection designed to deliver a powerful message from Apostle Joshua Selman right to your doorstep. This message carries the potential to not only bless you, but also ignite inspiration for greatness within you. Open your heart wide and allow your mind to embrace the profound in before we dive deeper. I In the name of Jesus Christ, I call you fishers of men. Amen. I call you fishers of men. Amen. Massive soul winners. Amen. You are bringing many to the kingdom. Amen. You are restoring the fallen and bringing them to Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that whilst you are at the business of winning souls, may God sort everything that needs to be sorted in your life. For many of you, at the point of soul winning, you will find your destiny help us. At the point of soul winning, you will find those God has ordained to lift you. At the point of soul winning, you will find your spouse. At the point of soul winning, you will find a good job. At the point of soul winning, you will stumble into prepared blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ, let honor not depart from your house. Let favor not depart from your house. Let goodness and mercy follow you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I call you the blessed of the Lord. I call you the lifted of the Lord. I call you the anointed of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, the sounds of joy and rejoicing will never depart from your tent. It will be good news all through this week. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. One minute. Lord, send laborers. Send laborers. Send laborers. Please pray. In one minute. Lord, we still need more laborers. Laborers as preachers. Laborers as kingdom-driven businessmen. Laborers as Christian groups serving the purposes of God. Laborers as apostles on fire. Laborers as prophets on fire. Laborers as teachers on fire. Go ahead and pray. Laborers as missionaries. Laborers as mission groups. The harvest is wide. We need more hands. We need more hands. Can we pray for the body of Christ in one minute before I continue? Lord, we pray. Go ahead and pray. We pray for apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers. Come on, pray now. We pray for businessmen. We pray for captains of kingdom-driven captains of industry. Lord, like Zebedee, like James, like John, we are in a season where God is mending nets. And this is everybody's call. Mend your nets. Apostle, mend your nets. You are called, but mend your nets. Prophets, mend your nets. Evangelists, mend your nets. Koinonia, mend your nets. Everyone can mend their nets. Check your nets. Mend your nets. Anger, character failure, inefficiency ministry. Mend your nets. You are called, but your, your witness, being a fisher of men will be ineffective until you mend your nets. Clear that his purpose of coming, Jesus now, was to reconcile men to God. His purpose of coming was not just to perform miracles, his purpose of coming was not just to deliver the oppressed as we know. His purpose was not just to bring increase and bring abundance. All of those were expressions. But primarily, Jesus made it very clear as we have in Luke chapter 19 that his purpose, the Son of Man came to seek and then to save that which was lost. Many expressions in the Bible point to the fact that the concept of soul winning is not just one that is reserved for evangelists or reserved for serious Christians, but that it is a mandate upon every one believer and that without soul winning, many aspects of God's program 
will not happen as intended because based on the sequence of God's program for the nations the first is soul winning it is only the one who is saved that can become a believer then the one who is a believer that can become transformed and matured and the one who is matured becoming empowered then the one who becomes empowered becomes a witness so the whole journey to being a witness starts with the person being an unbeliever and if soul winning becomes a missing part of that whole equation we will not have believers we will not have matured believers and we will not have witnesses who can be able to carry out the purposes of god and the program of the kingdom are we together so jesus is about selecting disciples and i think it's very important to just stress a point here talking about the move of god talking about awakenings talking about revivals it is important for us to know that revival is as powerful as the vessels that can be found and are ready to be used revival is not as powerful as the revival programs that happen in order of spiritual priority the first port of call in birthing revivals awakenings the move of god across any territory is that god must find men men who are available men who are faithful men who are refined men who are empowered are we together the revivalist is the one who can cause revival the one who is already awakened is the one who can sponsor awakenings so jesus is about to carry out this soul winning campaign that will start from his death his burial and resurrection but he needed people they would later be witnesses but at this point they were ordinary men up with their professions fishing for most of them and the bible says that he went to galilee you can imagine that he went to galilee and just watched the people there and he saw two brethren simon called peter and andrew his brother the bible says they were casting a net i can imagine jesus just standing by the seashore and watching these guys and he saw with the, the kind of skill that they used to catch fish and once they were done the bible says they were fishers that was their profession the next verse he allowed them to finish everything they had to do and then he said follow me i want to make you fishers but this time around not of fish but of men in fact give us niv i like the way niv puts it verse 19 at once no 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 go back to 19 niv thank you come follow me it says jesus said and i will make you fishers of men come first then follow me and i will make you fishers of men hallelujah there are a few things i want us to observe as we build an understanding for this discussion tonight number one jesus told the men in advance what they would become when he met them he did not leave them in the dark as to his intention for them he proposed this idea to them that they could become fishers of men now it's interesting that there were certain things jesus did not take away from them the ability to remain fishers the Bible says they were fishers or fishermen as we call it. When he called them, he made something a profound statement. He said, you will still be fishers. In other words, there are many skills you now have. You have made the job easier for me. I'm not going to remove some things from you. I will only redirect your mission. You will still be fishers. You thought on seeing them, he would say, I want to make you witnesses. He never said so. I want to make you apostles he never said so i want to make you men of god or i want you to be my disciples he said you are still going to be fishers but of men verse 18 of that scripture tells us they were already fishers that was their profession they were fishers and now he was changing their mission watch this now he was changing their mission changing their assignment but he still left certain things that he found with them he already found certain skills that they had that would make them to be useful in this new mission he was calling them into. So the first thing we have to understand is that Jesus Christ told them in advance that he wanted to make them fishers, 
but this time around not of fish in the sea of men fishers of men he still retained the word fishers meaning the skill was still important the zeal he found in them was still important the discipline he found in them was still important the skill that made them fishers would still be needed when they became fishers of men the zeal the discipline it was just the mission that would change isn't it amazing that the skill the zeal i wrote here the discipline that makes you a fisher or in any profession when god calls you most times is the missions that will change but those disciplines you have built will be used even in that mission now most people are waiting until the day they understand the call of god before they begin to build all the disciplines here were people who did not know that it was in their prophetic destiny to be apostles their prophetic destiny to be witnesses and to be men of god there were young people who found their father fishing and they got into that action you will be learning shortly that there are many components that make a fisherman a skillful one and an effective one jesus was not in a hurry to call them he stood by the sea and observed he saw something in them that would be needed in effective soul winning he saw the skill he saw the zeal he saw the discipline and he said gentlemen come i want to change your mission but don't throw away the skill don't throw away the zeal don't throw away the discipline this discipline i have seen in you that has made you good fishers will still be needed when you become fishers of men this is the first thing we observe when god comes to men most times it is the mission that he changes the discipline that means you do not have to wait until you understand your assignment to begin to invest in skill invest in discipline invest in strategic knowledge it will not be a waste even when you eventually find your place learning obedience will be useful whether you have found your assignment or not learning diligence will be useful whether you have found your assignment or not learning time management all of these things that make men efficient will not be thrown away just because god called you this is very important that means here up front i will teach you that even if you have not found your place in life and destiny in terms of purpose you can begin to build the skills of a fisherman because when jesus calls you you will still be a fisher it's only that you will now become of men are we together now yes imagine if he came and met these guys folding their arms and he said why are you people sitting idle and he said well we're not doing anything we're waiting for the day we'll be called there's some prophetic word that one day will be apostles jesus would not have appointed them the only thing they did not have was the mission but the discipline was already there are we together they began to build that culture of discipline already that skill of efficiency already it was easy for him to call them and switch them to their mission because whether you are a fisher of fish or a fisher of men, one thing will remain, you will be a fisher. Are we together? This is very powerful. Number two, Jesus said, come, follow me. The first instruction to becoming a fisher of men, he was speaking to people who were already skilled and yet he said, come, then he said, follow me. You would think he would call them and say, leave being fishers of fish and become immediately the fisher of men. There are consequences if you skip this step in your becoming a fisher of men. No matter how professional you are, no matter how successful you are, one thing is for sure, when God calls you, you start afresh. This is for sure your skill remains but he will not just switch you immediately from your life or whatever you were doing the business of men is very delicate and it needs training he called these people and he said follow me you will need a season of following in other words there are patterns you will need to learn you will need to watch me do it watch my approach 
to the lost. Watch my approach. They followed him to the house of Zacchaeus. They came and met him at the well with the woman. Remember the woman at the well? They, they saw different templates. He was training them to be fishers of men. For every believer who desires to answer that mandate of being a fisher, the first assignment is not to go to the field. The first assignment is to follow. To follow and learn. Learn what makes for efficiency as far as winning the lost is concerned. Now listen very carefully. I wrote something here. That the first requirement in becoming an effective fisher of men is your training, not the fishing, not evangelism. The first requirement in becoming a fisher of men is your training, not the fishing itself, or in our case now, not the evangelism. It's amazing how many people want to evangelize. They want to be part of the programs that lead to winning the lost, but they will not allow themselves to be trained. You are going to be learning that your life will be laced with a lot of inefficiency and pain and defeat and regret. Even though your intention is sincere, if you do not follow and you suddenly emerge yourself into a fissure of men, you will cause a lot of casualty at the sea. Are we together? Jesus trained them. He allowed them to watch his approach in dealing with men. Listen to me. Being a fisher of, man, of men is being called into the business of men. These guys were business people. They were not just called into the business of products and services. They were called into the business of men. And they needed hands-on training by following Jesus, by making observations. This is very important. I took out time to make a little study. And in that study, I tried to find out the training of a fisherman. What does it take for a man to be a fisherman? And I'm going to be drawing forth lessons from that training because Jesus said that we will still be fishers. It's only that we'll be fishers of men. And I took time to observe how a fisherman is trained. What are the factors that fishermen need to understand to be effective at fishing? Because they would be the same principles that will be used for effective witness, especially soul winning. You'll be learning why our evangelism and our soul winning campaigns and pursuits within the body of Christ is largely ineffective. Like I've told you, there's now, as we know, statistically speaking, above 8 billion people upon the earth and we have just a little shy of say 2.6 to 2.8 professing Christians across the globe. It's a very uncomfortable truth, but we have to understand and agree that something is wrong with the inefficiency of our witness, especially our soul winning. We have programs and conferences organized globally every year, every week, every day. There are many mission agencies across the globe doing, you know, you know, great things at different levels. But why is it that in spite of many churches, many conferences, many men and women of God, many church programs, it looks to me and statistically proven that there does not seem to be constructive advancement in terms of the lost who come to the fold. Something is wrong. And we will use today's teaching to examine what is wrong. The training of a fisherman. The training of a fisherman is also the training of a soul winner. There are many things that soul winners, believers who desire to be part of winning the lost, regardless your zeal, there are things we can learn from the training of a fisherman. And I want to run through a list with you, hoping and praying that as you listen, God will sharpen you, reposition you to become a very effective soul winner. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. So I wrote something here before we discuss that there are fishing principles that can help the believer become an effective soul winner. We are going to be learning what makes a fisherman an effective fisherman. 
and from the mandate of Jesus draw forth lessons from there that can make us become effective witnesses effective fishers of men are you ready now number one the first thing we have to learn in the training of a fisherman is that you need to understand the sea you need to understand the sea that is where you find fish you don't find fish in the air you don't find fish just on the ground you don't find fish on a tree if you want to be a fisherman the first thing you have to understand is the sea that is where you find fish are we learning now every fisherman knows that until you are trained to understand the dynamics of navigating the sea you will never be able to catch fish I do not know any professional fisherman who does not understand the dynamics of the sea and the sea is a very complicated place because there is a skill to walking or living in the sea walking w a o r k i n g walking in the sea there is a skill if you do not know it you can die at sea how many of you know that many people have died at the sea because there are times that the sea can be calm almost noiseless but there are times that the sea can be boisterous many fishermen like many believers do not know that the sea is where you find fish but if you do not understand the sea and how to navigate your way that mission can become a mission impossible that kills you right at sea and unfortunately many many believers in the name of evangelism have died at the very place where they are supposed to save sinners the sea for a believer represents the entire globe anywhere men can be found is likened to anywhere fish can be found when you talk about the sea in our context as believers we are talking about the entire globe now listen very carefully we are fishers of men and this is a training course there's no fisherman watch this that finds himself roaming around jumping and shouting around the sea no the fishermen observe the weather are we together they observe so many things and even when the sea becomes boisterous like you'll be learning the skill that you deploy when the fish the sea is calm is not the same skill you deploy when the skill the, the sea is boisterous are you following me now very important the first lesson in the training of a fisherman that can be brought to the training of a soul winner is you must understand the sea please look at me my goodness this world you see is the world of men and like the sea it is a very complicated space are we together if you want to save sinners and you do not understand the world you have found yourself in you will get into the middle of things that you may never come out of every soul winner must be trained to understand the world wherein you'll be going to save souls in there are places across the earth that are harsh and merciless like the boisterous nature there are places i hope you know that the fish in the sea don't stay at the same place there are some of them you can find them in fact just looking at the sea you can see them popping up but there are others who are deep down the sea many believers who want to be effective soul winners have never taken time to they are not even interested in studying the cosmos the world of men and so we carry a lot of blind zeal in the name of evangelism especially as touching our modern day world there are many many fishermen who have gone to sea and never returned back home like many people who went and suffered several casualties because they were not trained to understand that being a fisherman like a soul winner lesson number one is you must study the sea the world that we live in is not a world of compassion the world that we live in is not a world of fairness the world that we live in is not a world with men alone there are spirits cohabiting with men 
You need to understand the world wherein that's where sinners are. The world that you are living in, that you are going to evangelize and win souls, is under the influence of this spirit called Satan. He has manipulated that sea with a, a way of thinking, a way of behavior. He's called the God of this world and that he's blinded the minds of the people. If the believer does not understand the cosmos, your witness will be very ineffective. If you're following me, shout amen. amen. So like the sea, the sea for the believer and for the soul winner represents everywhere men can be found. Abuja, Lagos, the city center, your village, everywhere men can be found qualifies to be called the sea. Number two, the second training for a fisherman that is applicable for a soul winner. I hope you are learning already. If you do not know this, you will not truly be a fisher of men. You need to know the various kinds of fish there are at sea. Aha, uh -huh. this is a very important one. You need to have this at the back of your mind that there are various kinds of fish in the sea. All fish are not the same. That tells you immediately that your strategy will not be the same. All fish are not the same. Every fisherman knows that there are a multitude of fish or fishes as we say in the sea. According to National Geographic, I did a little study. It says there are about 32,000 living species of fish on the earth. Let me repeat that again for your knowledge. There are about 32,000 living species aside from the ones that are extinct. These are the various kinds of fish that are found across various seas on earth. You see why you need training? Because there are many soul winners. The first fish you were trying to catch was a whale and it swallowed you. Because just because it's a sea does not mean you go and catch everything there. Are we learning now? Know that biologically all men are the same. But spiritually, just like the variety of fish we have, I'm not an agriculturist, but I know there are very many kinds of fish. Even that sea you see is divided into fresh water, salt water. They, they are not the same. The way you catch some salmon or tuna is not the same way you catch a shark. There are vicious sea creatures you must be aware of. So that you don't stand there with a small boat and a net as a fisherman and not return again. Are you learning tonight? Fishers of men. 32,000 living species of fish. That means different species of fish require different techniques. The way Jesus approached the woman at the well was not the same way he approached Zacchaeus. Are you seeing that now? There is wisdom that must be understood and deployed by every soul winner. There are many soul winners that have gotten into trouble because they did not know that this sea you are seeing called the earth has various kinds of fish. There are people who blindly went to preach with fanatism without help. They are in prisons today. And it's not just, I'm not talking of persecution or martyrdom. I'm talking of standing in a sea and not knowing the kind of fish that would come out. Every fisherman in training knows that you must know the various kinds of fish. Look up. Let me tell you the various kinds of fish that talk about the variety of unsaved people. There are people Jesus said are already close to the kingdom. That means all it takes, they are, they are overripe for a harvest. Are we together? Already by their personality and their disposition, they are, they are just one step into the kingdom. Morally right. Nice people, very thoughtful, very philosophical. By reason of their philosophical stretch, they have already gleaned attributes that make them responsible people. It's easy to receive the gospel. No argument. You bring Jesus, they embrace it. 
another kind of fish. There are fish that you have to dig the sea, the ground, to bring them out because of how, how deep they have gone. Are we together? There are people, as soon as you see them and say, look, I want to tell you about Jesus, they say, sit down. Where was Jesus born? I will tell you the date. At the end of it, you end up with debates and arguments and you see how much of scripture you don't know. They leave you feeling bad and they say, go and do your homework before you come and talk to me the next time. The problem is not the sea. The problem is not the fish. The problem is that the fisherman was not trained. There are various kinds of fish. There are fishes that bite and kill. Did you hear what I said? They bite anything, including other fish. You will meet them eating other fish before your arrival. Are we learning? When you are dealing with a fish that eats other fishes, you have to be careful. Ask any fisherman that you came and met the fish before your arrival. You met it eating. Have you seen, most of you watch Nas National Geographic, these great whales, they just open their mouth and allow these tiny fishes to just swim inside and they close it. And you want to use a hook to get that kind of fish? A fish that is used to killing. A fish that does not mind spilling blood. No, there is an intelligence you need. Is someone learning now? The way you win a naive, innocent person is not the way you win a cultist who can kill. At every point in his life, there are weapons with him. You need to be careful. There is a skill. Fishers of men. Are we learning? There are people who out of zeal, they entered one chance, not by mistake, by themselves. Because they felt they wanted to talk to a group of six people by themselves with wisdom. And while they were speaking, they noticed nobody was responding, but the car was moving. <laughs> Until they got to a point where they said, come out. And they found themselves in a forest somewhere. Now, I'm not being sarcastic. We blame everything on the mission God gave us, not knowing that there is a training for fishermen. If the fish swallows you, most likely you are Jonah. If the fish swallows you, most likely you are not a fisherman. If he tells you to walk on, on the sea, even if you are sinking, he will hold you. Because it's his word that made you come. So sometimes we need to stop blaming God for the inefficiencies that have been experienced at the mission field. It was a product of zeal without training. There are people who have died as genuine Matthias, honor to them. But there are people who have died the death of fools and the death of amateurs. God is teaching your fingers, your hands to war and your fingers to fight. That at the sea, just like the earth, the mission is, the field is wide. The earth is plentiful and there are a variety of fish. Are we together? If you're following, say amen. amen. The second thing every fisherman knows and every witness and every soul winner must know is that there are a variety of fishes in every sea. Number three. The third thing we learn from the training of a fisherman that applies to a soul winner in training is that there are various techniques for catching fish. When it has to do with the business of fishing, like it has to do with the business of soul winning, the mission is the same, the message is the same, but there are various techniques. And you know why by now, because there are various kinds of fish. The third thing I needed to learn, I hope you are learning, that there are various techniques for catching fish. For instance, there's what they call the bait and the hook. That you tie a bait to a hook. You've seen fishermen do that? Usually that goes for a small fish that you can even lift by yourself. And so they put worms or they put whatever, a bait in a hook. And then they just throw it at sea or at a small pond or a river. And they wait patiently. And they usually can know when a fish has taken it because it bites the, the bait together with the hook. 
and then they wind it backwards and pull it up and put it into a basket many of you have tried that many of you probably fish that way another strategy is to cast your net the use of nets is called casting that you can cast nets and even that as i study have various skills to do it but i will save that for another day at least these two tell you that to catch fish does not just require one approach alone this is very powerful there is the bait and the hook and there is the casting using a net and even that one happens in many ways are we learning write this down under point three not everybody will be saved on a crusade ground not everybody will be saved by a preacher but everybody should be saved not everybody will be saved on a crusade ground not everybody will be saved by a preacher there are many skills many techniques and many strategies this is very powerful it's a very important training that any fisherman knows that depending on what kind of fish depending on what location of the sea there are various techniques that you can deploy to catch the fish now listen carefully still on point three i wrote something here and i want you to listen every god ordained ministry in the body is sent by god to a particular group of men every god ordained ministry in the body of christ is sent by god anointed by god to fish a particular group of men both hooks and nets are ways of catching fish the hook must never downplay the net and the net must never downplay the hook they are both methods of catching fish are we learning now you must understand that for this evangelical work these missions these global missions this soul winning work it is not the method you know that is the only method there are a variety of methods god ordained methods please look up how many of you know a group called the full gospel businessmen's fellowship let me see your hands full gospel you've heard about them even if you are not part of them you've heard about them i've had the honor of preaching there i preached at their world conference last year phenomenal people intelligent people it's a it's a collection of literally without exaggeration some of the best business minds across the globe this has lasted for a very long time it was an honor that i had to speak to them last year phenomenally intelligent people literally across every nation now do you know that there are certain people on account of their financial status and on account of the things that happen around their life they will never have the opportunity to hear a preacher on a crusade ground because their lifestyle and where god has lifted them will not even allow them know that there is such a thing so god raised the full gospel businessmen's fellowship for instance now if joshua selman as a man of god having the privilege to shout on a crusade ground down place the ministry of the full gospel businessmen there is literally a demography of wealthy people that will never be saved are we together number two how many of you know about any children ministry any children ministry christian children ministry cem uh what they call them now anyone at all for children how many of you know that there are many adults who frustrate that ministry because they feel what do children the children don't need to learn anything but how many of you know that every armed robber was once a child every prostitute was once a child every destroyer of destiny was once a child and god knowing that it's important to train up a child in the way he should go and that not many parents know god enough to do justice to the destinies of the children he placed a burden upon certain people to minister to the children and yet those ministries in many places are neglected ignored and looked at as less of a ministry 
to apostolic ministries like this the hook must respect the net they are all tools designed to catch fish they are only catching various kinds of fish there is a net that is too wide to catch tiny fish the fish will swim out of it gladly the fish will not even recognize that there is a net there because the net is too big for that fish are we together now ah. so you will find that fisherman in a children's class teaching and jumping like a child and you are wondering what is this foolish adult doing remember there are tiny fish that your big net cannot catch yet they need to be caught are we learning so the man or the woman we had one of our fathers i uh, think i'm um, what year now school of ministry i think he was maybe now the second or third oldest person who had been part of the school of ministry students maybe he's even following now great man he was then in his 60s approaching 70s or was it up to 70 i think and this man could be so playful i mean he could just jump and sometimes i remember then wondering i said can you imagine as old as this man is he has remained youthful at heart because these are the kinds of fishermen that were anointed how many of you know it takes the anointing to still remain a child at 70 because you are weak and tired and angry at life at 70 it takes the anointing to still make you have the zeal of a child fishermen if we dedicate one koinonia service for children now some of you will be sleeping even before praise and worship so what is this children's thing now yet that may be the meeting that saves your child i'm just teaching you in this training that every fisherman like every soul winner if you do not understand a strategy observe carefully and ask god don't condemn when you see jesus with the woman at the well don't conclude what is jesus doing at the well it is a strategy for her salvation when you see jesus with a madman in gadara don't conclude what is he doing with demon spirits watch to see what happens to that madman when he comes back to his right mind are we together now our witness is ineffective because through religion and the traditions of men we have defined a path based on our religiosity and we are forcing and blackmailing people to go through that mold and that anybody I see with a hook if I'm holding a net or anybody I see with a net if I'm holding a hook is not a fisherman you may be wrong there are various kinds of fishes and there are various techniques for catching them so when you see God anoint somebody with a unique ability just for prosperous people don't condemn there are souls in the business world that God has given that person a mandate to reach. If it is not your assignment, respect it and stay in your call. But don't condemn. You are losing fish. We have been losing fish to the religiosity of men. If you see a woman called into women ministry, don't say what is these women and all these their problem. They will soon start gossiping about their husbands. That is not your concern. There are women who will never be saved till a woman talks to them. There are women who the, the nature of their pain will require another woman like them to say, I know what we are going through. Are we together now? As anointed as God has made me by his grace, there are certain elderly people who will only respond to Baba Deboe's altar call. I can preach there and they are impressed. Hitting their children and say, be like this man. Don't be stubborn. Yet they are not saved. They are hearing, even if I'm crying on stage. But Baba will come out and speak in 30 minutes and make an altar call. And the woman will stand up and come up. Because there are various kinds of fish. We are all fishermen. Let's respect ourselves. There are many people who have mastered the art of using their hook who are about to throw away their hook looking for nets unfortunately your mandate does not need a net if you carry that net you will find out you don't even have the strength to swing it you may follow that net into the sea and there are many people who have been given nets 
But the controversy with holding a net and swinging it, they would rather just hold a hook. But you will only catch one fish per hook. I am certain that the sermons you've embraced have been a wellspring of blessings, lifting your life and igniting a profound commitment to wholeheartedly serve God. We extend a heartfelt invitation for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, ensuring you remain connected and never miss any upcoming videos by activating the notification bell. Your subscription transcends a mere click. It symbolizes a dedication to continual spiritual growth, enlightenment, and empowerment. Embark on this faith-filled odyssey with us, as our channel strives to become a sanctuary for both spiritual seekers and steadfast believers. We staunchly believe in the transformative prowess of God's Word, and our objective is to disseminate messages that deeply resonate with the essence of your soul. Become a part of our community, subscribe, and let the radiant light of divine wisdom, your presence is integral to this uplifting journey, and may the abundant blessings of God overflow in every facet of your life. Amen. Stay connected with us across all our social media platforms at Flaming Channel and explore more on our website at www.flamingchannel.com. Gratitude fills our hearts and may God's abundant blessings continue to grace your life abundantly.